It's your girl Queen Toss Crime. I'm back again with another video. Shout out to my old and my new subscribers, my members, and my moderators. I love and I appreciate y'all. As y'all know, yesterday was Danny Robinson's birthday, so I wanted to give a breakdown um, because it was time anyway for me to, to do another breakdown for Danny Robinson. So we're gonna do a breakdown. Um, for Daniel okay so let's move that over there all right so the last video we did on Daniel Robinson okay we focused in and we honed in on Caitlin she's still a suspect we the people say we don't believe what she said what she said ain't adding up. That ain't, it's not good enough for us. And what she's saying is not matching up with what Daniel told people because he's not here to speak for himself. But what she said and what he has told people is not matching up. And David, which is Daniel's father, is also not understanding and not getting what they're describing is not his son. Okay? So, today, this video, we're going to hone in on Kenneth, the co-worker. We're going to go over what he said and try to make sense of what he said. Okay? So, on the day he went missing, June 23rd, 2021, he showed up to the work site at 9 a.m. Okay? And this is the day he went missing. He showed up to the work site at 9 a.m., had a conversation with a co-worker. Kenneth. Okay? Co-worker named Kenneth. Kenneth recalled that the conversation, there's a lot of suspects in this case, okay? These are people, everybody that's a suspect is the last people that had contact, words, any type of interaction with him around the time he went missing. Okay, we have to look at all those people. Okay? So Kenneth recalled that the conversation made no sense. Okay, no sense. And it lasted for about 15 minutes before Daniel waved goodbye. Got in his Jeep, left the job site. Kenneth assumed that Daniel would call in sick after he left, so he continued on to work. Kenneth, we the people want to know, what did y'all talk about for 15 minutes? You said y'all conversation lasted 15 minutes. So we the people want to know what did y'all discuss for those 15 minutes? What did y'all talk about? What did y'all discuss? Because you're not saying what you're not going in depth. You're only telling a little bit. What did y'all talk about? We the people would like to know. What did y'all discuss for those 15 minutes? Another thing I don't understand with this with, with his statement. He said after they talked for 15 minutes, Daniel waved goodbye, got in his Jeep, left the job site. Kenneth assumed that Daniel would call in sick after he left, so he continued on to work. Why did you assume that Daniel would call in sick? We the people want to know. 
why did you assume Daniel was sick? Did he? That's why it's important for us to know what did y'all discuss those 15 minutes? Because did he tell you he wasn't feeling well? What was it? Did he tell you he was not feeling well? I mean, because if that's what he told you, if he told you, hey, I'm not feeling well, I'm finna go home. Then that will make sense of why Kenneth would say, I was going to work. I figured he would call in sick. But you're not telling us what y'all discussed in those 15 minutes, and I find that very odd. You telling us everything else. You have all these other things to say. Why not discuss what y'all talked about those 15 minutes? You're only giving us what you want us to know. And that's why everyone that got something to say, as I spoke with him, are persons of interest. Okay? Point blank. You're a person of interest. This this case is, is crazy. Okay? We're on multiple cases, so... Y'all hang in there, you'll get, we, we got multiple cases we juggling right now, okay? All right, so, however, Kenneth contacted their project manager, Steve, maybe later in the morning, afternoon, we don't know. Steve told Kenneth that he hadn't heard from Daniel all day. So. Kenneth contacted the project manager, Steve. So, why? Was you concerned? Because you had to have asked Steve, have you talked to Daniel today? Because why else would Steve tell you, I haven't heard from Daniel all day? So, there had to be some conversation there between you and Steve about Daniel. So why, Kenneth, did you go to Steve and ask about Daniel? So you got to read between the lines. You got to break things down. So Kenneth contacted the manager. Didn't say what it is he said, but just said that Steve told him that he hadn't heard from Daniel all day. Something made you contact Steve, that's why I need to know what you talked about with Daniel. That's very important. That's key here. Because you're only giving us bits and pieces, Kenneth, and I don't like that. I don't trust that. We the people don't trust that. So, you felt the need. Now, at first, you assume Daniel would call in sick and you went on about your day. You wasn't too worried. Now, all of a sudden, you switching up a little bit. Now, you're worried and you bring it up to the manager. Like, what was you? What, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? What were you doing? I want to know, like, what made you go to Steve? And ask, did Daniel contact him? What was it that made you go to him? Because he went on off to work. Like, it wasn't a big deal. So, what happened? What changed? We, what changed? So, the questions here is, why did Kenneth assume Daniel would call in sick? Okay, and went on about your day. You wasn't worried about Daniel. You telling us you figured he called in sick, you went on with your life. You went on back to work. You went on to work. Then later on, you switch and you get worried and then you ask the manager about Daniel. That's suspicious to me. You switched. And, and, and something made you something made you concerned. Something made you ask. So 
your statement is is yeah it's a look it's a red flag it's a red flag Kenneth and we the people want to know what did you talk to Daniel about those 15 minutes what did he tell you because what you're saying you're leaving out so much more you're leaving out a whole lot that that we need to know so this is the quote that Kenneth gave he was just looking off into the desert he had a very, very distant look in his eyes. Whenever he turned around again, I would look at him and look into his eyes. The first thing I thought was maybe it was drugs or something. But his pupils were not dilated. From that standpoint, everything appeared to be normal. Then I thought this was a medical condition or something. I wasn't too sure. So I kept watching him, but he just kept turning around and looking off into the desert. Then he just turned around, walked back over to his Jeep, and I just assumed he was going to get something out of his vehicle. And he opened the door, got in, sat down, put on the seatbelt. Then he looked at me and just waved at me and backed up and took off. It's red flags all within this. Let's break this down real quick. So, the statement you just gave us, you said y'all had a 15-minute conversation. This doesn't look like a 15-minute conversation. This looked like, in this quote, you're making it sound like y'all didn't talk. Y'all just stood next to each other and looked off into the sunset. That's what this quote is basically saying, your statement is saying. It's not saying what y'all discussed. This doesn't look like a 15-minute conversation. This looks like something that you're, like you're judging him. And my question is, okay, he was looking off into the sunset, into the desert. He had a very, very distant look in his eyes. Describe a distant look in his eyes. Then you brought up the first thing. That you thought was drugs. Why? Why did you think the first thing was drugs? Couldn't he be bothered or have some on his mind or worry? Why does it always have to be drugs? So off the bat, Kenneth, you're prejudging Daniel. And that's what I see in this. You, you, you prejudging him. You judging him. Okay, then it goes on to, he looked into his eyes and his pupils were not dilated. So you was all in this man's eyes? You was all in this man's eyeballs to look and see if he was on drugs. Something isn't right about this. Because what you're saying right here doesn't sound like a 15-minute conversation. And so after this, don't forget, Kenneth, you said you figured he'll call in sick and you went on to went on to work. You wasn't concerned. So it couldn't have been that serious. You went on to work. And didn't contact your boss or, or anything if something was so wrong. But see, then you describe all of this. See, I don't like that. So you looked into his eyes. I don't know why you all in that man's eyeballs. That is off. That's a red flag to me. Why you all in his face? Set, figured out his pupils weren't dilated. So then he went on. Then you said it, everything appeared to be normal. So, after you see he wasn't, his pupils weren't dilated, and your first thought as a judging him was drugs, and his pupils weren't dilated, so you, okay, he wasn't on drugs to you now because his pupils weren't dilated. Then you went on to assume medical condition or something. You wasn't too sure. I mean, all these prejudgments. 
That is a red flag to me. Why are you judging Daniel so hard? So intensely. Why? Why? A lot of this stands out. So, assuming he's on drugs, red flag. Medical condition, red flag. He could have just been in deep thought. Had something on his mind. Y'all go to the to the edge of the world. And I, I just don't understand that. Okay? And then you go on to say you kept watching him. Why? Why are you watching him so hard? Like, you're not giving us a lot of information. Why are you watching Daniel so hard? That is weird to me. If somebody is watching me so hard, I'm going to look at them like the crazy ass you. Are you okay? Do you have a problem? Why are you looking at me so hard for? Why, Kenneth, were you looking at Daniel so hard? Why did you keep watching him? He probably felt uncomfortable. And then he just turned and looked out into the desert. Because you're looking at him so hard. That will make anyone uncomfortable. That will make me uncomfortable. you looking all into my eyeballs and my pupils and assuming I'm on drugs and medical condition. and It's just, it's very funny that you got all this to say and all these observations. But they couldn't have been that important because you didn't say nothing and you went on to work and then later on you contacted steve so it couldn't have been that important so why say all this and do all this y'all get what i'm saying like i said this is just weird it doesn't make sense what ken was saying is not adding up and then what did y'all talk about you basically saying that you know he was looking he was looking off into death and so what did y'all discuss you said y'all had a 15-minute conversation. So what was the 15-minute conversation? This doesn't tell us what y'all talked about. What he said. It, it, from by what you're saying, he didn't say nothing. Nothing. You're making it sound like Daniel said not a word. And that is weird because you said y'all had a 15-minute conversation. So, Kenneth, which one is it? Which one is it? Did y'all have a 15 minute conversation? What did y'all talk about? Because you're describing and judging him. But what did y'all, what did Daniel actually say? What did y'all actually discuss? That's what we want to know. You're leaving that out. And I feel like you're leaving that out on purpose. And then you want to throw in all of this, assuming drugs. Like, why do you judge Daniel? Why do y'all judge people so hard, so much, and you don't even really know him? I don't get that. And then you say all of that to the police. Really? What? So now we have law enforcement. They're already not too bright and right. And Buckeye, they already don't care because he's a black male. He's not important. So now you say that to them, they boom, they really finna just not care. Oh, uh, he's on drugs. He'll come down and he'll be, he'll come around. He'll show up somewhere. He'll pop up. So I don't like that. I mean, because it's already bad enough that he's missing. And this statement doesn't even make it better. And on top of it, it makes no sense. With plenty of red flags all through the statement. And on top of that, you didn't even give us what he said. And why did you assume he would call out sick? Did he say he was sick? I mean, you're not giving us the truth here. And that's why I don't believe Kenneth. And he is a person of interest. Because you're giving a whole lot of detail and you want us to think a certain way about Daniel. Why? Why do you want us to look at him a certain way? Why? 
Why are you not giving us what y'all talked about? Why? We the people want to know why. Around 3 p.m. that day, Kenneth was made aware that Daniel still had not been located and still hadn't made contact with anyone from work. And he hasn't talked to his family that same day. So, Kenneth found out that day, later on that day, that Daniel had not been found, located, and he still hadn't made contact with nobody at work or with his family. Kenneth decided to look for Daniel himself and follow his Jeep tracks to the work site, where Daniel was last known to be around. where Daniel left so abruptly. And he noted that the tracks headed west into a large desert area. <clears throat> so, my thing, all of a sudden at 3 p.m., Kenneth, you became so overly concerned. But you're telling us that you wasn't concerned at the beginning because you went on to work. And thought he would call in sick. So you wasn't so concerned. And all of a sudden something triggered you. And just switched in you. And all of a sudden. All of a sudden you got so worried about Daniel. And then you was told. You was made aware that Daniel had not been located. And hadn't spoken with anyone. So who made you aware? Who told you? I would like to know. Who told you that Daniel. Nobody talked to Daniel. And he hadn't spoke to his family. Who told you that? Kenneth. I would like to know that. And then you decided to look for Daniel yourself and you followed his Jeep tracks. All those cars and people in the desert and the work site. And how do you know where which tracks were Daniel's? How did you know which tracks were Daniel's? And which way that he went? Like, how would you know that? You spoke to him at 9 a.m. Allegedly for 15 minutes. So at 3 p.m., I'm sure his Jeep tracks are not there. Because other people, I'm sure, came in and out. So I am very so much questioning that statement as well. And your tracks that you said were Daniel's led into headed west into a large desert area. Hmm. See, I'll let that resonate in. Me personally, there's a lot of red flags with Kenneth, his statement. You know, from 9 a.m. to 3, many people come and go through there. They got lunches. They got people arriving to work. So... I'm sure Daniel's Jeep tracks were trampled all over. But Kenneth said he followed Daniel's Jeep tracks later on that day after 3 p.m. And they led him to the west large desert area. Or is that something that Kenneth wants us to believe? Does Kenneth have more involvement than he's leading on? Because he's narrating. I see a narration. I see Kenneth narrating. And I don't know, is it because he's involved or he wants people to look at Daniel a certain way. And my question is, why? Why are you narrating? Why? When I don't even believe this. I don't believe you found his tracks and tracked him. To the large desert area. I don't believe that. Them tracks would have been messed up. I don't believe that. So. If you were to say something that's not true. And you put something out that you don't believe. Why? Why would you do that? What? Why do you want us to think he went west? I'm just saying. Why do you want us to believe he went west? Y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all comment down below. It's your girl, Queen Toss Crime. Once again, Darren Robinson just had a birthday. 
and I want to say happy birthday, Daniel Robinson. I am praying that he is found safe somewhere, but the longer this takes and he's been gone, the same time Summer Wells been gone. So the longer he's gone, the longer we know what the statistics are of him being found alive. So we're going to pray for Daniel. We're going to pray for his family. And we're going to wish Daniel a very, very happy birthday. And I'm out of here. Let me know what y'all think. Kenneth is definitely a suspect. Old girl Caitlin is definitely still a, a suspect and person of interest as well. This your girl, Queen Talks Crime. I'm out. Peace.